So it's football season, and I'm sure that many of you Peyton Manning fans have semi-sweet feelings about his retirement. Well, I study the same neck injury that led to Peyton Manning's retirement. It's called cervical myelopathy, and it's the most common form of spinal cord injury. It's caused by chronic compression of the spinal cord due to bone or soft tissue as a patient moves his or her neck. So here we have an MRI of a patient with cervical myelopathy. On the left, the patient is in a neutral position with his head straight, and on the right, he has moved his head and neck backwards. And what you can see is how thin the spinal cord has become as he moves his head and neck backwards. Cervical myelopathy is extremely debilitating. First, these patients have pain in their neck. Then they can lose dexterity and feeling in their hands. And finally, they can actually lose their ability to walk. This means that they can't get around easily or do simple tasks like buttoning their shirts. The only way to stop the progression of this disease is to have a surgery that decompresses the spinal cord. The problem with this, though, is that there are many different methods of doing this surgery, and no one exactly knows how each surgery affects spinal cord compression. So sometimes, just like in the case of Peyton Manning, the first surgery doesn't relieve the spinal cord compression enough. And that means these patients might have to have a second, third, or even fourth surgery to have relief. And each of these surgeries is extremely risky and very expensive for the patients. But what if we could know before the surgery how each of these techniques affects spinal cord compression? Well, that's exactly what I'm studying. I'm creating computer models of cervical myelopathy that mimic how the spinal cord is compressed during daily motion. Here we can see on the computer model that as the head is tilted backwards, it replicates the compression of the spinal cord. So then what I can do is incorporate surgeries into this model to see which surgical technique is best at decompressing the spinal cord. This will mean that the surgeon can choose the most effective technique prior to the surgery. And choosing the most effective technique means that the patient will have a better chance of getting better with the first surgery, removing the need for subsequent risky surgeries. Thank you very much. So tell us a little more about yourself. Sure, so um, I grew up in central Pennsylvania, near Penn State, but don't worry, I am a Hawkeye fan. I am rooting tomorrow for Hawkeye. Um, so yeah, and so then I went to Cornell University where I studied mechanical engineering. I thought I wanted to be an aerospace engineer, but I decided that you know, making rockets and maybe just giving people television and radio wasn't as satisfying as I would like to, so then I changed into biomedical engineering, worked for a couple of years, and came back for my PhD. Fantastic. So what got you interested in engineering or, biomed or biomed? Sure, so engineering in general, I was kind of always a science nerd. Um, I have become less than a science, I'm still a science nerd, but I used to do physics homework for fun, like extra. <laughs> Um, I don't do as much extra <laughs> physics homework, I'll say, um, but biomedical, I really loved that we could apply all of the things that we were um, learning about from like materials and metals onto the body, and I find that really fantastic, and helping people is really, really good for me, so. So when you're not working or doing physics homework, what do you like to do? <laughs> Um, so I guess I'm sort of active, I would say. I've taken up climbing, as I see some of my climbing friends in the back. Um, I also, some people say that like I'm a little old lady on the inside, and I enjoy doing things like um, sewing and embroidery and gardening. So those are the other things that I enjoy. You say gardening? I do, yeah. Iowa City has a great, um, if anybody's interested, they have a great um, plot that you can actually rent from the city for like $15 for the whole growing season. Uh, so my sister and I actually rented a plot this year. What do you grow? Um, we grew Brussels sprouts and so many tomatoes we can't count, carrots, sunflowers, lots of different stuff. Uh -huh. Iowa has fantastic soil, that is for sure. <laughs> so what do you see yourself doing in five years? Um, I would really like to work in industry or maybe at the FDA, um, something that's going to directly help people. That is, that's really where you my still passion be gardening? is. I hope to still be gardening, okay. Even, you know, depends where I am. It's hard to garden in the city, but at least little flower, flower pots. 
Thank you very much. Thank you.